So the issue is that if you, again, continuing on the proposition with conceptual validity, okay? The, in other words, that the proposition is conceptually valid. And that's the way you check your religious faith or the tenets of your religion. It's not an issue. Oh, you have to believe this to be saved. Issue. That's that's like, you know, yeah, you're the dummy. Whatever we tell you, you have to believe and you have to do that to be saved or else you're going to hell. That's mind manipulation. I'm a pastor, for goodness sake. I preach the God. I've been preaching the gospel since I was like, you know, 12, 14, 15 in the streets of New York. I was the guy bothering you with the with the you know with the microphone and the speaker. Remember me? <laughs> okay. The the churches that do that to you, they are manipulating you. Okay? They're manipulative. That's abuse. Okay? And all of them do it. You got a hundred churches. All the, each of the hundred churches believe in a hundred different things, and each of them have told you, if you don't believe this, you're going to hell. Well, who's telling the truth? Because somebody's lying. <laughs> About 99 of them have to be lying. Simple as that. So again, the, 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 the proposition has to be conceptually valid. And the body of facts that you can that you use is the Bible. But remember, God created the heavens and the earth with his word. See, so you cannot you are stuck in a situation that you have to. You must consider all the scripture. And it has to be valid with science. And mathematics, if you want to be safe. Because these are things that God created as well. Through his word. So they have to be in harmony. God can would not create through his word something that is disharmonious with his word. Don't make any sense, right? conceptually valid that's the issue see that so the religions and I'm, I wonder yes, a lot of people get to get their uh, toes hurt right now but a lot of the churches that teach you that science is not to be considered there are um, they're fooling with you okay that's an ancient concept when science began to challenge church teaching oh God forbid right when the discoveries of men began to open up the mind, you know, you got to remember something. God is in control. Well, you think that happened, that God just let, let, let go of the, uh, the carriage there? Come on. All of these advances, God has been controlling them, you know. It's just that the church over time, it, it, interesting, you look at the history and I'm going to cut this here and then continue because I know the family's coming out soon. If you look at the history, you'll see that God gives the church the truth, bring the gospel, Christ dies on the cross, and then we have what's called, you know, the, the, the blossoming of, this, of the gospel. And then we have the dark ages. Isn't that interesting? It should have been the, the light ages. The ages of enlightenment, right? But we don't see that the ages of enlightenment came from the church. <laughs> we see that we see that the dark ages is where the church was was holding on to dear life, fighting against the hordes and the, the barbarians around, and they're holding on to Rome. You see, that's what you see in history, and then. We see a, a, an education start and an enlightenment begin. Yes, of course, the church brought it in, of course, music, written music and, and education, absolutely. 
Absolutely. Without the church, this was not would not be possible. The church had the word of God. They had the the light of God. So it was going to happen. However, it did not stay within the church. And the reason that it didn't stay within the church because the church did not allow progress to occur within itself. Again, we have to keep this. This is what we've been teaching for X amount of years. But the problem is that it's not. It wasn't what Jesus had taught X number of years ago. If you look at the scripture, you say, well, well where did all this come from? Well, we can't, we can't go against what the popes have done throughout the years. See, this is the problem. Remember, conceptually valid. And the faith has to be based on the Bible. The body of facts have to be based on the Bible and math and science. See? So how, why did God allow the world, those who are now, now they had to be doing this out of the church because it was illegal for them to say anything like the earth was round or something like that, right? <laughs> Uh, why did they have to continue outside the church? And then the world went and, and ran with it. They ran with what the church gave them, right? Because the church was unwilling to let them be guided by the Holy Spirit and the, um, the grace of God. So they became stagnant. They, they, it's just uh, what happens with religion. You get a snapshot. It's not fluid. So you get, you get frozen. It's really sad to see, but people are that way too. You know, people get stuck. So, uh, and then the world continued with the word of God. How do you say that? The church, they left the church. They were secular. How can you say they went with the word of God? Because they went with science and math. Science and math was created by God through his word. See? So God has provided, you know, the world went on to discover them. The church should have been doing that, but they didn't. But the fact is that God has released to all men, just like the sun is out. The sun is out for everybody. All men, science and math. So they can do what now and what you can do and what you need to do? You need to check the proposition against the body of facts, the Bible, right? Sa math and science so that you can see what is conceptually valid. Okay. And those things that don't muster with Bible, the whole Bible, the whole council, not just a few verses here and there, the whole thing. And not just Old Testament. Old Testament, New Testament. And not just New Testament. New Testament, Old Testament. The whole thing from the first word of the Bible to the last word in the Bible. Okay? Science and math. That's how you verify the truth. Conceptually valid. And if your religion and your faith does not meet up to those standards, to that, to that uh, litmus test, then you got a decision to make. Okay. But don't call, don't, don't ever say, don't dare ever say, if you don't take that test and you don't follow the results, do not ever utter from your mouth or think for one moment that you are in the truth. Never do that because you are certifiably in error, undeniably in error. You're just wrong. Okay? So you can fool yourself if you want, but leave the other people, leave them alone. Okay? Don't try to proselytize them into your, into your church or anything like that. Don't do that. Okay? Because you're leading them to error. Because I've proven to you, I've shown you how to check. How to check. 
right? And the rest is up to you. And it's true that most people are too lazy. Most people are too lazy to read. You don't want to deal with signs. It's hard enough the Bible. King James is the hardest, right? Hard enough. What well, do you have to worry about math and science for, right? And, uh, and the thing about that is that because you have to make sure. Simple as that. Don't try to debate with me or try to contend with me because a lot of people are oh, well, you gotta get this has to be by faith and I feel it in my in my soul don't don't come with all of that because if it's true that you feel it in your soul that God that that Holy Spirit gives you witness I know something else the Holy Spirit can also tell you he can tell you some science and math God can teach you science and math okay so that you have conceptual validity to the things you believe that's something that the holy spirit can give you matter of fact jesus said the holy spirit i will send another comforter and he will teach you and guide you and and bring into remembrance all the things they told. he told that to the disciples so you have no excuse you have not it's just you just want to keep with your crowd and keep with your faith and your religious thing and you know it's part of your culture now so that's part of your life that's what you want to do but don't and then you're going with these athe you know debating with atheists some of you really stop it because you're making everyone look bad you're making your own faith look bad because when i get on these debates and i join in i see that what the things you guys are saying to these atheists they're cleaning the floor with you they can't clean the floor with me. See, and there's a quality difference when I get involved in a debate than when you guys have been in it giving this, I don't know what it is you call it, poor defenses for what you are believing in. And they're right. You know, you're not even, you're not providing evidence. You're not even providing what you could, which is, conceptual validity because you could provide that but you don't know anything yet you say you have the Holy Spirit the Ruach HaKodesh that you have the truth you have nothing take care